directly from Bangalore, India. Uh, we have Krishna Prasad Seshagari Rao, who is a senior director of platform engineering of Bangalore-based Target in India, an extension of the US retailer Target's headquarters of operations. In this role, he leads platform engineering, one of the pillars of the data science team. The team is responsible for building and managing in-house platform products to support enterprise reporting, data collection, data search, and A-B testing. Krishna joined Target 14 years ago and has worked in many leadership roles with expertise in the merchandise space planning and supply chain domains. Krishna, I'm very excited to have you with us. Thank you so much. I know it's late in India right now and uh, so grateful for you to take the time to share your expertise and your journey with our global audience today. Thank you, Jose, and thank you for the nice introduction. Good morning, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are well and safe. So I am really, really excited to be here with you all to share my perspectives on a subject that's very close to my heart, data trust, and how data trust plays a crucial role in enabling an organization becoming data driven. So over the world, if you look at how data analysts who are part of different organizations spend their time, 70% of their time they spend in wrangling the data. So what I mean by that is, in order for them to answer a specific analytical question, they end up spending most of their time in finding the right data that their organization already has in its disposal and make the necessary transformations to get the right sense out of it and use that to really inform a specific analytical question. There is gross inefficiencies in this overall, overall experience for data analysts. Rather than spending most of their time in doing complex activities like mathematical modeling, they end up spending time in figuring out how should I really get the data that I need to really answer a specific analytical question. Imagine the possibilities that we can really bring forward for the data analyst if we are able to really make this data wrangling efficient. There comes data trust. Today, what I am going to do is there I will walk you through an approach what we in Target have adopted that really enabled us to help the entire organization understand the data and establish trust on the same and make sure that we are able to leverage the right kind of data to answer specific questions, thereby driving both operational and strategic decisions. So the topic is how should we think about enabling organizations to trust their data? So before we dive deep, let's spend some time to understand why trust is an important aspect. So we all know that data is becoming a critical asset for all organization and it plays a pivotal role in enabling organizations to make strategic and operational decisions. And data needs to be reliable. It's one of the aspect of data for anyone to really trust it. Right? Unless the data is reliable and trustworthy, the individuals within the organization are not going to use the data in making any kind of decisions. In such organizations, you would certainly be able to see the symptoms of the problem, like even for answering a basic question related to organization's performance, the individuals within the organization will struggle to really find the right data that really helps them to answer the question, which means lack of awareness of what kind of data they really possess. The second biggest thing that you would notice is multiple copies of the same data existing, which means that there is a lot of confusion amongst the individuals of the organization to really understand which copy of the data that they should be really using to drive their work forward. The third aspect or the third symptom that you would notice is there is no way or means for the data consumer to understand what kind of quality that the data that uh, they are 
having at their disposal. When I say quality, is the data actually complete? Does it really represent the complete information that uh, that the business process produced as part of its operations? And does it really meet all the quality rules that the business process is supposed to really comply with in terms of bringing the data together for broader enterprise consumption? And there is no easy way or means for any everybody in the organization to understand that. Last but not the least, we all know that failures happen, right, in any software. And when such failure happens, which impact the availability of the data for broader consumption, the organizations may not have the right kind of framework established to really share transparent information about these kind of failures, which means that the end users of the data would end up using data which may be stale and which would in turn has huge impact on some of the work that they are doing. So you will be able to see this kind of symptoms, which if you think about how to really resolve this kind of symptoms, organizations need to invest on building trust in data, right? So how an organization should really go about in building trust? So the first step in anything, right, that we have to do when it, when it comes to trust is, the entire data ecosystem should have a well-defined definition for all the data elements that they that the organization possesses. So the date, the definition of the data should be consistently understood across the organization. So there isn't any room for misinterpretation when it comes to how should we really use the data for and in a specific situation. The second thing that we have to focus on is not only uh, making the data consumable, we also need to be transparent about where the data is coming from. If I want to know a specific metric related to my business process, I should have the ability to understand what are the data elements that have been really put together to arrive at the metric and which sources of data are emitting these data elements that I am using and developing my metric. And not only that, not only the upstream traceability, but we also need to provide visibility on where and all the specific data element is getting used downstream as well. Moving on, we also need to have a well-defined process of establishing service level objectives. When I am saying that my data for the specific business process is going to be available at 8 a.m. Eastern time, every day on all seven days of the week, I should have that established as a contract with my stakeholders and make sure that I'm making the data available as per the SLO. The fourth one is very, very crucial. Understand what kind of quality constraints and quality expectations that the data element is expected to meet based on our conversations with the stakeholders and make sure that there is an easy way for us to measure how the data is measuring up against the quality uh, rules that we have agreed upon with the stakeholders and expose that as well. And the last but not the least, every data element should, uh, every data set or every business process data should have a very clear ownership defined. So that owner should in fact, operate like a product owner, right? We have been using product owner terminology in application development world, but even in the data world, product ownership is really catching up. Data also needs to be treated like a product so that you are able to clearly establish the uh, roadmap for the product, the life cycle for the product, and how effectively and efficiently the data can be used for uh, answering specific questions within the organization. So these are the components that we need to keep in mind when it comes to how should I go about in building trust in my organization's data. Now we have uh, the next step in this process is, okay, we have understood these are the uh, attributes that I need to keep in mind and how am I going to bring this to life? So if you think about the five things that I uh, articulated, it is nothing but we have to answer specific questions related to data, starting with what data it is. 
when it is going to be available where it is sourced from and how reliable it is so if we are able to get these four aspects figured out accurately the next step is make sure that we are able to catalog the entire data ecosystem of our organization because unless you catalog there isn't a way for you to really understand what actually you possess what your organization possess in the form of data so start with cataloging all the data assets after cataloging make sure that the catalog is available for discovery so only then the data elements will be may, will be used across the organization and you cataloged it you made sure that the catalog is available for discovery the next step in that uh, in that process is we spoke about some of the attributes of trust we have to establish metrics like for traceability data quality data availability and metadata about the data in terms of definitions ownership and all those stuff and we have to expose those metrics for each data element that helps the end user understand the trustworthiness of data what we are exposing so this these are the steps that we need to keep in mind when we are trying to build something together for enabling the organizations to start trusting their data and move in their journey towards becoming data driven so now we know what are the attributes that we need to keep in mind and how should we really go about in building trust in data the next step is how everything is going to come together right so this is a very simple approach sounds very simple but really requires a lot of investment to really bring this to life like we all are so much used to google right so we really cannot imagine a life without google today and similar to how google operates for the world think about standing up a google for your organization's data environment so which means you need to start with cataloging all the data assets when i am saying data assets it's not only the data set it includes the source system from where the data is sourced the jobs and the the numerous jobs that really move the data from point a to point b and the infrastructure that is actually getting used like the message queues and the microservices that have been used to really move the data the infrastructure that is enabling the movement of data and how the data is consumed through different reports all aspects of data needs to be cataloged so once we have this stood up it would really help us to realize one important aspect right so like what i said in the beginning wrangling data wrangling is a costly uh, affair right it data analysts are spending 70% of their time starting with finding the data and so on and so forth once we have this catalog a live catalog which can be discovered searched and so on and so forth and you would certainly be able to realize reduction in time for finding the right data that you need and you would also have a very good understanding of which data sets are becoming stale and how should i really manage the life cycle of those data elements that are not needed anymore for the organization which means that you have a very clear understanding of your data ecosystem and you are not investing undue resources to managing your data ecosystem but by appropriately managing uh, relevant data within the ecos within your organization and purging whatever is not required and once you have this live catalog which is searchable and making things easier for the entire organization the trust will automatically increase moving on so let me just dive deep into specific aspects of uh, this catalog that i am talking about right so what are some of the things or what are some of the features that we all should be keep in mind when we are building a data catalog getting all the assets catalog is the first step but we also need to make sure that it is easy for everybody to search and also discover the third dimension metadata enrichments is also very important we will i'll cover that in a bit but when you look at search some of the basic functionality that we really need to enable for users who know what they really want to find 
we should be enabling text based search based on whatever they enter in the search box need to just bring up all the assets that meets the search string and while showing the results you can certainly use different aspects to rank your search results like you can certainly look at how effectively that specific data element is getting used and how uh, what kind of uh, 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 likes that the data has you can use that as one mechanism from the usage point of view to sort the data sort the search results sorry and you can also consider freshness data quality as other set of attributes that you can use to order your search results and the other uh, intuitive thing that we should that you should consider is depending upon the individual who is searching who is uh, issuing the search we can filter the data based on the level of permissions what the individual has and only show those results for which the use the individual has permissions to access last but not the least consider re providing recommendations for the search data set is mostly used with this bunch of data sets the other set, other set of data sets for example if you if the user is searching for let's say sales at a specific location normally we know sales is also used with the inventory position in that location so you can provide a recommendation like when so when a date when the search is issued for sales users of this data set also use recommendation in inventory as a recommendation to make sense out of the data so now moving to discover so here we are trying to address those type of users who necessarily do not know what they are looking for but they know they have to get into a specific space to discover what they actually want like if you think about an e-commerce site right you can go into specific categories and then browse for different types of items that you are really interested in so this specific browse kind of an ecosystem helps us to stand up a controlled environment within which the user can find what they want to enable that we have to when we are cataloging the data assets we have to keep in mind we have uh, categorizing or grouping the data assets by domains subject areas and organizational hierarchy will go a long way in terms of enabling the discoverability of the data asset last but not the least the metadata the metadata enablers there are three aspects of metadata that we all have to keep in mind uh, when you are cataloging the data one is the uh, the first one is the metadata descri describers which contains all the static information about the data when i say static information the owner the level of permission the um, the uh, description about it and how uh, how exactly it it needs to be accessed in terms of giving a sample query and so on and so forth the next one is metadata relations this is where uh, you uh, you use this information to establish the lineage between different uh, sources between the sources of data and the actual data set that the user is interested in viewing and also providing a view on where and uh, where and uh, where exactly it is getting used across the organization that's the relationship piece and the last piece is the metadata events this is the one that gets updated on a very frequent basis like the timeliness when exactly the data is going to be available on a daily basis the quality measures of the data and uh, how is the how has the usage been trending and so on and so forth so that's the metadata event part if we make sure that we are taking care of all these three dimensions from when you are building the catalog then you would certainly have a very good um, repository which would be uh, which would be effectively which can be effectively used by the entire organization and it will become a lot more uh, meaningful for everyone to use that relevant data to drive their body of work in essence this catalog should not be a once and done it should be a live catalog it should be constantly updated 
and it should always expose all the relevant data and it should be easy for everybody to access. So that's what uh, this catalog should really meet as a as a requirement standpoint. <clears throat> so we once we have this right, so we already have built this and we have all the information in our fingertip. And if you think about what are the possibilities and what and all that I can really accomplish as an organization. Right, so if you have this Google type of uh, ecosystem built for your data environment, then you can certainly help the search and discoverability of the data in our organization. We can provide a clear view of where the data has come from. And by exposing the right set of trust metrics, you can help the user de determine whether they can trust the data to be used in their respective uh, body of work. And you can also enable the users by uh, offering help in terms of how they should really go about in using the data. And if there are specific security related uh, restrictions that you really want to add for the data, then you can provide those information in terms of how an individual should really go about in getting the right kind of access to this data. So all these things can be done without having the need for the uh, individual in the organization to talk to multiple people scramble to get the information and spending a lot of non-value added time to get to what they want to get to. So in essence, <clears throat> how this is really going to help the entire organization, we spoke about trust, we spoke about uh, having this uh, a catalog of data assets, which is going to represent the informa information about data, constantly and also it is going to be accessible all the time this is playing this is going to play a huge role in enabling organizations to accomplish the vision of how can i ensure that any data that my organization needs is going to be easily discovered and it can be shared with the right kind of individuals within the organization and i can establish the right kind of understanding for everybody who needs to really know about the data set and it can also be managed effectively in terms of life cycle and this vision is very very crucial because once we are able to get this uh, uh, infrastructure built and in line with this specific vision then you are certainly driving enterprise-wide data discoverability by providing all the necessary trustworthiness metrics so that the entire organization can use the right kind of data to drive their strategic and operational decisions. So we have spoken about all these uh, aspects of trust and how it really helps organizations become data driven. In addition to this, one of the other things that organizations can also realize by having this kind of an investment being made is you would be able to clearly understand what aspects of your data drive greatest strategic and operational impact. And you would also be able to determine which data sets have the highest risk potential, right? No matter whether you are hosting your data on cloud or on-premise, when it comes to imposing controls on your data, it is your responsibility, not the cloud provider's responsibility. Even if you run your data, even if you have data centers run by cloud enablers or cloud providers, you are responsible for ensuring that the data is rightly protected. So we all know how, how, in, how important it is to make sure that we are up, coming up with the right kind of controls for uh, our high risk potential data in order to ensure that everything is safe. So having these catalogs really helps you to establish a good understanding of what is the data in my ecosystem that has the highest risk potential and determine what kind of controls that I need to bring forward so that I am completely safe and not exposing myself to any kind of threats and thereby risking my uh, reputation in the marketplace. And Another thing that we are, we will also be able to deliver by having this catalog is we can deliver data as a utility, similar to how 
the human population is able to enjoy water and electricity by uh, with uh, by by turning on a switch we would be able to enable data that is being made available to everybody like any other utility and of course we have spoken about this in terms of how uh, data is becoming a growing asset and it is definitely gaining a large part of uh, defining strategic and operational decisions and having a clear idea of organizations data will really put all the uh, put uh, put the organization in a very good spot to drive or maximize all the opportunities that is going to be made available for them so yeah uh, before uh, i go into before i end my session i also wanted to share with you how we have really brought this to life in target right so i spoke about this google and all those stuff just wanted to spend some time talking through uh, how this has been brought to life so as you can see uh, location is the search text that the user has entered and you are seeing all the results which match this location text string and we also spoke about discoverability in addition to search which is where all these different categories like can i search based on a specific data platform like uh, hadoop or oracle so on and so forth and this data group is it is does it belong to a specific business unit like merchandising marketing so on and so forth and uh, you can also have the ability and flexibility to search by domains and you can also have search tags and so on and so forth and the asset types this is also very important right so do i only need to look at the data sets or should i uh, i am i am interested in also data movement jobs reports kafka topics apis and so on and so forth just wanted to show this and the second one is i spoke a lot about metadata and just wanted to decouple how this is being brought to life so when we show the search results we also make sure that we are addressing all the aspects that would really drive the trustworthiness of the data like timeliness lineage metadata for the data security and quality and if you look at the um, metadata aspects lot of aspects around okay what's the platform uh, who when was it last updated when was it created and who updated it what was the service level objective and how much time this data will be retained normally so all those aspects around metadata is being provided as well last but not the least lineage so the asset that we are showing in our search page is this and we are making sure that we are showing the lineage in terms of from where the data originated from and where and all it is getting used in our organization so this gives a very good understanding for the end user to make informed decisions on okay this data is getting used in this specific business functions and it has all the uh, qualities and the characteristics that i need to answer my specific business question and i can make an informed decision so just wanted to make sure that uh, i am providing some visibility to how we have really brought this uh, metadata based data management search capability to life in our organization so before i close the session i just wanted to leave you with this following three things which i believe you can take uh, take it back with you the first one like what we spoke about data trust is an important aspect and it really helps the organizations in the path of becoming data driven one of the first steps in building data trust is knowing organizations data and ensuring that it is appropriately cataloged and the catalog is exposed and it is easy to search and it can uh, it is kept up to date it is a live catalog and uh, the last but not the least the trustworthiness metrics that we spoke about that should be appropriately established for all the data elements in partnership with the data owners and it should be it should be exposed in your uh, through your catalog so that everybody understands what they are using and how they can really bring that into their business process in terms of driving 
their business decisions. With that, uh, I have come to the end of my presentation. Terrific, Krishna. Thank you so much for that. Uh, a true practitioner view of uh, of these issues, and we really appreciate that. And uh, and uh, uh, driving at something that's so critical for uh, so many organizations in a time where we all are talking about the importance of data. And uh, you know, data is the new oil, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, if that's the case, you know, how are we treating data in our organizations? And you you have provided a very uh, practical uh, perspective of that. So lots of questions that have come up. I'm going to um, relay uh, several of the of the main themes back to you here in the next few mm -hmm. minutes. Uh, the first one has um, ha is about uh, ownership. You talk about ownership, data ownership, and uh, and that sounds good, but it's actually sometimes in large organizations like Target quite difficult sometimes to pinpoint who is going to own this data because lots mm -hmm. of people lots of people think they own it but mm -hmm. there's also this di dynamic where nobody really wants to own it and have the full accountability and responsibility for it so mm -hmm. so it's it's, it's a, very, a a bit of a paradox um so the question of governance and how do you make decisions about who is going to own what type of data where so if you can talk a little bit more about that, how do you make those decisions? Yep, uh, that's a very good question. So for any big organization, there are roles like chief data officer or in most of the organizations, uh, chief uh, information officer will also play this role, right? So first step is establishing the core data domains that are going to be considered within the organization, right? So these core data domains, are not getting uh, grouped or categorized based on uh, source systems or the actual implementation of the applications, but this is more aligned with how the business is kind of running. Like for example, item. I'm coming from a retailer. I'm just giving some examples that uh, that is coming to top of my head when it comes to core data domains. Like item is a core data domain. Location is a core data domain, right? So once we have the core data domain, and establish alignment for that core data domain with a specific business team and have the business owner of the team identified as the owner for this data element as well. That's what we have done in Target. So wherein we would be able to clearly know, okay, item belongs to merchandising, though it has a lot more prevalence in sales as well as in supply chain, its origination starts with merchandising. That is how the item comes into my organization's ecosystem. So a merchandising business team should own that merchandising data, merchant, merchant, uh, the item data, item core data. So once that ownership is established, so then you would have product owners. So you have the data owner. And from, from that point of view, you organization kind of falls in place in terms of product owner who is responsible for defining the roadmap for that item data. And an engineering team will also be stood up to really support the uh, kind of uh, uh, work that surrounds making this item data available for the entire enterprise use. So you have a product structure wherein you have a product owner from the business and the engineering team combining forces but the ultimate owner of the data is going to be the business which produces the data. And that starts with the process of identifying core data domains and establishing ownership at the business leader level. That's very good. That's a very good insight on, on how you go uh, through that decision making process on uh, assigning the owners. So thank, thanks for sharing that. Um, I have uh, a comment here and, uh, and, uh, and a question from Karen Blatty who asks, um, when you, what, what software, uh, if any, are you using to store the data? Um, and, uh, you know, it's in multiple platforms. Are you centralizing some of this data storage? Um, you, you know, is this something that you develop internally or you're something that you, a commercial platform that you may be using for your, for your data storage? So uh, this is centrally managed. The cataloging of assets is centrally managed. 
and whatever screenshot that I showed is an in in-house application which was built ground up within the organization. That's all I can tell. Very good, very good. So you developed that internal to a, to mm -hmm. a large extent. Uh, the uh, a question about um, this one comes from William Fuller related to the differences between um, the data catalog and a data dictionary. Uh, who should be able to to see, um, you know, read or read only the data? How, so a couple of questions here. One is is maybe if, if there's a difference in semantics between a data catalog and a data dictionary, and the other one is that um, how you how how do you do uh, how do you decide on the on the access to different types of data in the organization? So data dictionary uh, data cataloging is. Uh, talking about cataloging data sets that your organization produces, right? It is across the board. I'm talking about multiple data sets that needs to be cataloged centrally. Whereas data dictionary talks about the attributes of a specific data set, right? So if the, the screenshot that I showed, it not only tells you the platform information and where exactly it is sourced from, it also explains what are the attributes that the specific data set contains. So that is also exposed through the product that we have built, right? To the second part of the question, when it comes to security and all, the data management office plays a crucial role. And there are a lot of guidelines, uh, governing principles that exist in our e ecosystem. As a retailer, we have person access to personally identifiable information, and data that needs to meet CCPA and GDPR, GDPR guidelines. And we have SOX, we have HIPAA, and we have GLBA. So all those uh, compliance related uh, guidelines are well established within the organization. And the data management office clearly in, uh, identifies what are those data elements that belong to, that needs to comply with all these different guidelines. I can just tell, a very simple example around CCPA, right? So CCPA talks about uh, personally identifiable information and it is definitely classified as uh, a secure handling required data, which means that only the folks who has the need to know will have the permission to know. And all those permissions, security permissions for a specific data element will be decided, managed and governed by the data owner. That's why ownership is very important here. The, owners, the owner would certainly be able to clearly understand and articulate what are the different compliance rules that the specific data element need to comply with. So then the engineering teams will be able to bring it to life in terms of implementing all the required security rules and role-based security will take care of ensuring that all these principles are complied with. And folks who have the need to know only will have the ability to see the data. Very good, very good. That's a that's a great overview, Krishna. Thank you for that. Um, the, the question that uh, came up also, especially when you're talking about building bridges uh, early on in your presentation um, and how one develops uh, trust in an organization that do not have communication bridges between IT and the business. Mm -hmm. um, is there a standard approach that you're using internally to build such bridges between IT and the business uh, to develop you know, trust uh, on the data, but you know, develop trust around the organization as well? So the product model uh, has been a blessing in disguise for us, right? So in the last two to three years, uh, Target as an organization uh, has been amping up in terms of bringing product model to life in all the active in all the efforts and all the uh, investments that we are making to take technology to have technology enable the business right so all the efforts that happens within the organization will invariably have a product owner and the product owner will certainly be the business voice for the product and the product and the engineering organization will not be under the same chain of command so there isn't a positive or negative influence. It doesn't matter. It's the two sides of the same coin. But again, if both product and engineering are part of the same organization, then there is, there is 
an opportunity to over index on one aspect rather than looking at both business and technology in this through the same lens there should always be creative tensions between the product organization and the engineering organization so that uh, the product model coupled with this principles of not having the product owner from uh, in the same chain of command of engineering has greatly helped us in balancing what needs to be prioritized and building trust also has been pretty easy because there is a voice from the business always sitting in what we are trying to deliver it doesn't uh, 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 this is not related only to data but anything that we do in target this is this is very good this is very good that context really helps uh, uh, the audience understand the different the components <clears throat> in the system that make the system work so uh, i appreciate that those insights um krishna for someone who um is learning from you today and is thinking about how i can apply this to my uh, to my organization, uh, I'm thinking about you know the you know there's an investment that you have made here on catalog and search of all these data assets. Um, what would be some suggestions you'd have for them on uh, on taking the first steps in this direction and maybe even cre creating a business case for it? How do you how would you measure the value creation that you get from for an activity like this? What what would be some of the steps that you would give? to guide them in this journey yep so the first value proposition right so we need to i spoke about the symptoms in the first slide right where the lack of awareness in terms of what data that is available in my organization that i need to use to answer a specific question so like that you need to quantify those symptoms right so because of lack of awareness how much effort is going wasted and what kind of opportunity that we missed as a business and uh, without having a line of sight on data that is uh, uh, that is a high risk element and we have not put in appropriate controls and because of which we had to endure a security incident and what kind of impact it really resulted in so quantify that that's the first step though it will be easy for us to really sell with our stakeholders Yes, this is an important investment we have to make. Then we have to start small, right? So with most of the organizations moving towards microservices-based architecture, and it will be easy for anybody to build pipes, uh, pipes of uh, uh, pipes of data flowing between different applications, and you can just go and uh, intercept the pipe to understand the metadata of, of that specific data element produced by the business process and then just bring that catalog or establish that catalog centrally. So start slowly. And again, like what I said, this catalog should be live, right? Which means that it is not a once and done kind of an effort. Start small, show value for your critical business area, and then continue to really invest in making this real. Krishna Rao, thank you so much for sharing your expertise today. It's such an excellent, uh, session on the practical applications and approaches for creating data trust, which is so critical uh, intuitively, but you really have laid out an incredible business case for that. And uh, um, and we really appreciate that. Really appreciate you sharing, being transparent and sharing the expertise that you have, but also the mechanisms and approaches you're using to make this work. So we are very appreciative in, on behalf of our global audience, uh, grateful for uh for your leadership thank you thank you for the opportunity jose and i wish you all a very a very good rest of the day and uh, looking forward to seeing you all and thank you for being such a wonderful audience thank you ladies and gentlemen that's krishna rao uh senior director of platform engineering at target in india and uh what a wonderful presentation on uh, very a very practitioner driven presentation. You know, did you notice that there were no pictures on his presentation? This was about what's really happening, what's going on. He wasn't here to kind of sell you on anything or any concepts. It's about how it's working, how it's working for Target globally, um, how they're building this uh, data structure and uh, and and data trust um, as a foundational piece for their strategy. So I, I I think that's that's a really great view of a strategy execution and uh and uh
and what it takes to do it well. So um, grateful for him sharing that with us. Uh, we're gonna wrap up this, this session and we are going to start back up at the top of the hour with a shift into healthcare. We're going to we're gonna be welcoming the research manager and system architect for precision neuro for the precision neurotherapeutic program for the Mayo Clinic. Uh, Scott Whitmore is gonna be with us talking about measuring business processes, learning how to link business outcomes to process performance, learn the five measures common to all processes, and learning a more useful form for a business change roadmap. Um, so looking forward to that. I'll meet you all back up at the top of the hour.